Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you also to our witnesses. I just want to be, be clear. I think we can all agree that uh, Iran is an oppressive and dangerous um, neighbor to everyone in the region, and we all know that we're looking for peace um, in the region. I think everyone can agree in the Congress on, on that goal. Um, the Iranian regime threatens our allies, including, of course, the democratic state of Israel, and destabilizes the region by funding terrorist groups, including Hezbollah, Palestinian terrorist groups in Gaza, and terrorist and militant groups in Iraq, Syria, Bahrain, and elsewhere throughout the Middle East. Now, the regime is fueling Russia's illegal war with Ukraine, sending bullets and Iranian-made drones, which are targeting and killing innocent Ukrainians, and that's happening uh, today. And the Iranian regime commits terrible crimes against their own people. They crack down on any, on any dissent and so fear among the population. They oppress, imprison, and kill women who are brave enough to stand up for their human rights and fail to protect even young schoolgirls who are deliberately poisoned within the regime. The Iranians deserve to be confronted and called out at every turn. And members of both parties can agree that above all, the Iranian regime cannot access a nuclear weapon. The best way to guarantee Iran cannot obtain a nuclear weapon is through international negotiations, careful diplomacy, and a negotiated solution, not another Middle East war. We know this because history and precedent show that the only time we've been able to affect Iran's regime actions is with diplomacy. Now, Donald Trump's reckless so-called maximum pressure strategy has failed and made us less safe today and less safe than ever. Rather than slowing Iran's march towards a nuclear bomb, Iran responded to Trump's decision to abandon President Obama's, uh, President Obama's Iranian nuclear deal by getting closer to an actual nuclear weapon. Now, when President Biden took office, Iran's enriched uranium stockpile was more than 10 times higher than the limit set by the Iran deal. Under Trump, Iran is more highly, has, has more highly enriched uranium, more, enrich, more enrichment sites, and has ended inspection protocols. I want to also cite some prominent uh, voices from the region that also testify that Trump has made it less safe. Now, I want to start with the former Israeli Defense Force Chief of Staff, General Gadi Eisenkot, who said, and I'll quote, the fact that the U.S. withdrew in 2018 released Iran from all restrictions and inspections in the deal, even if there were holes and brought Iran to the most advanced position today with regard to its nuclear program, end quote. Ra Zimp, who's an Israeli military expert in Iran, stated in 2021, and I quote, today it's clear that maximum pressure did not yield its political objectives. It doesn't matter how much pressure you put on them, the Iranians see their nuclear program as an insurance for the regime, end quote. Now, under President Trump, as Iran got closer to a nuclear weapon, our, our nation crept far too close to dangerous conflict with this adversary. Now, in 2020, under President Trump, U.S. forces in Iraq were struck by more than a dozen ballistic missiles launched by Iran, escalating threats to, to near war. Now, I know, I know some voices would like us to launch a destructive forever war with Iran, but our allies and partners should understand that the American people are done sending our soldiers to fight and die in forever wars. We must be focused on our greatest security threats, Russia and China, and we can't afford additional Middle East conflicts. The only logical alternative is smart diplomacy. Now, President Biden has pursued this strategy, I think we believe appropriately. I believe negotiations have reduced tensions and reduced the risk of a serious escalation of conflict in the region, which is appropriate. Now, last month, the Wall Street Journal reported that Iran has, and I quote, significantly slowed the pace at which is it accumulating near-grade weapons and rich uranium and has diluted some of its stockpile, end quote. Now, I'm concerned that many voices in Congress are irresponsibly trying to block or prejudge diplomacy, regardless of its merits, to score political points. Now, President Biden is securing the release of captured Americans, which should be a bipartisan priority for any administration. In exchange, South Korea is releasing Iranian funds, which can only be spent on humanitarian goods, food, and medicine for the Iranian people under, of, co of course, close supervision of the U.S. Treasury. These outcomes would not have occurred had the Biden administration also not intervened. I also like to note the timing of this hearing, as Americans are being released from Iran, as, as the Americans being released from Iran are not yet free. They are in a precarious situation, and I hope that this hearing does not undermine the efforts to secure the release of these Americans. Now, diplomacy is hard, and it's true that the Iranian regime is doing horrific practices against old people, whether it's women, whether it's again against the LGBTQ plus community, and we need to support President Biden in his efforts to contain Iran's nuclear program. I urge both sides of this committee to evaluate our diplomacy by following the facts and not trying to score political points. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.